When we think about fusion energy, most people envision a giant magnetic donut containing a hundred million degree plasma. But the reality can be something much more explosive. No, not a civilization destroying bomb, just a little bomb outside of San Francisco at the National Ignition Facility, or NIF. Rather than using a fission bomb to squeeze the heavy hydrogen to densities and temperatures needed to fuse hydrogen into helium, NIF struck a pellet of heavy hydrogen the size of a seed with 192 lasers firing at exactly the same instance from every direction. This created a miniature H-bomb releasing over five megajoules of energy when it was struck with two megajoules of laser light. The ratio of the energy out to the energy in is called Q. NIF achieved a Q of about 2.35. Five megajoules might sound like a lot of energy, but it's only enough to boil about a gallon of water. This approach is called inertial confinement fusion. Can we take the architecture of NIF and make something much more efficient and create a series of small explosions that add up to a power plant? In this episode of Decarbonize, we're going to look at inertial confinement fusion. There are several companies, including First Light and Marvel Fusion, that are focused on this approach, but I'm going to talk about Eximer Energy, which is trying to build on the work of NIF, focusing on less expensive and more powerful lasers. I corresponded with Connor Galway, CEO of Eximer, and some of what I will present will be from him, not all of which is published but what is, we'll have a link in the description. And of course, I'm responsible for the content here. If you're not clear what fusion is, I recommend you start with the first video in this series where I explained all of the physics you need to know. I'm not going to dive into how lasers work and the difference between the NIF lasers and eximers, but here are the highlights. NIF used 192 lasers to deliver two megajoules of energy on target, while well, Eximer plans to hit the target with about 12 megajoules across only two lasers. So the energy per laser is about a thousand times higher for Eximer, and the cost will just be a fraction of what the Department of Energy spent on NIF. Eximer gets its name from the type of lasers they'll be using to provide this tremendous amount of energy on target. Eximer lasers are commonly used for delicate eye surgery and semiconductor manufacturing. There was also significant work carried out by the Star Wars Missile Defense Program in the 1980s on how to build high-powered Eximer lasers. So six megajoules per laser is pushing the boundary, but they're not starting from scratch. There's a reason NIF didn't pick this approach. One is that they started decades ago, and there's been a lot of improvements in Exmer lasers since then. Another is, to make inertial confinement fusion work, you need a short pulse of intense light. And that's not what Exmer lasers are known for. They spread their energy over a longer pulse. Exmer is working on nonlinear gas optics that will compress the pulse based on work from the Soviet Union in the 1970s. With the laser sending out such a high energy beam, you can't use physical optics like mirrors because if they reflected only 99% of the light, the 1% absorbed would destroy them. Even the energy of NIF's laser was a major problem. They spent millions maintaining the optics. For eczema, physical optics would just melt with every pulse. So rather than traditional mirrors and lenses, Eximer will be using nonlinear gas optics. With only two lasers, the energy on target will not be as uniform as it was with 192 lasers. Energy only coming from east and west, but not north and south, or up and down, and everywhere in between. Eximer believes that their large target of heavy hydrogen fuel will couple more efficiently with the laser beam, and they'll be able to achieve ignition and once that's achieved, the flash of fusion will spread across the target like flame and gas after a match has been dropped in it. In principle, this could lead to very high Q. According to published work, see the link below, a Q of 65 is attainable. And according to Connor Galway, 
they believe they'll reach a Q of 125. But the challenge is for the fire to grow fast enough to inflame the target of heavy hydrogen before it rebounds from the shock of the two lasers. Because after a very short time, the densities will drop to a level too low to support fusion. Again, according to Connor Galway, they're modeling that 30% of the fuel will be ignited. Like most fusion companies other than Helion, they're using molten salt with lithium to capture the energy and breed the tritium fuel they need. What they're doing that's less common is having a waterfall of molten salt so they don't need a wall between the salt and the mini H-bomb. With no solid surface being struck by plasma and neutrons to be damaged, their reactor vessel will last decades and not become radioactive. And let's face it, a waterfall of liquid salt bathed in neutrons from a mini hydrogen bomb every second or two sounds pretty cool, at least to me. The waterfall will absorb the energy from the explosion and the heat will be used to boil water and generate high pressure steam, which will power a good old fashioned turbine and generator. Will this work? Maybe. If they can get the laser energy high enough and the pulse compression optics working, they've got a good chance of generating fusion. They've raised $100 million so far, which should be enough to prove out the lasers and optics. Exmer is using that money to construct a facility in Denver called Phoenix, which is probably better than building a facility in Phoenix called Denver. There they'll build prototypes of the lasers and optics that will be needed before they can build a full-fledged reactor. To move forward, they'll need to demonstrate lasers that are more powerful and efficient than any that exist today, and optics made of gas that can do things that haven't yet been done. If they're successful, I fully expect they'll be able to raise the money for the next step, a pilot fusion plant. Not a commercial one, but a facility that takes what they've built at Phoenix and shooting heavy hydrogen targets to demonstrate not just that they can get fusion, but with a gain about 50 times higher than NIFS. Inertial confinement fusion has a challenge in that each pulse generates heat, which is converted into electricity, which is converted into laser light, a drop in efficiency at each step. With 7% efficient lasers, the fusion reaction must have a Q of about 40 just to break even. Unlike tokamaks, there's no steady state burning where you can just introduce fuel and remove energy. Even helion can use the energy from the previous pulse directly to power the next one, much more efficiently. For Eximer, let's run some numbers. They plan to strike the target with 12 megajoules of light. Their estimate of gain is 125, which is high. Remember that NIF finally got to 2.35 after decades of work. But let's roll with their estimate. That means they should get 1,500 megajoules of fusion energy. A steam turbine is about 40% efficient, so now we're at 600 megajoules. The Navy was able to build Exomer lasers with 7% efficiency, so let's go with that. So about 170 megajoules would be needed to power the next shot, leaving 430 megajoules to sell. In more familiar units, that's 120 kilowatt hours. If they're able to achieve one shot a second, that's a very respectable 430 megawatt power plant. There are technical challenges, but the level of investment seems reasonable to me, given the upside. And if they're able to build lasers and optics suitable for a commercial plant, or at least close, then they'll be able to build their pilot plant, which will need to demonstrate the high gain needed for a commercial plant. Then another stage of fundraising to build something that actually can put energy on the grid. And like Helion, their approach can be a peaker plant or provide base load energy. Like all of the companies I'm talking about, I think they'll probably fail, but there's a reasonable chance they'll succeed. And if they do, it will be revolutionary, but I don't expect anything very soon. Optimistically, I think we're talking about 2040 before we see any power on the grid. If you think I got something wrong, please let me know in the comments. Since you got to the end, 
it probably makes sense to like the video and subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to support my channel, you can buy me a Guinness. And you can click here to see more of my videos on nuclear fusion. And please forward this video on to anyone you think will find a molten salt waterfall bathed in neutrons cool.